Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam and you are watching Flick Connection. And in this episode, I'm gonna tell you about all the best stuff getting added to Netflix in October 2019. So we're going to cover some old movies they're adding that you want to keep your eye out for, some new Netflix originals, some new series, everything that I think you want to keep your eye on and the date that it releases. Now there are some really, really interesting Netflix original movies coming out, including two horror films, but the first of the month is where they always dump a bunch of movies. So let's go ahead and get the first out of the way and then we'll cover some of the really new stuff getting added. On October 1st, Along Came a Spider is a Morgan Freeman mystery thriller I, far from his best movie about hunting down a serial killer, Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, which is interesting because Bad Boys 3 just released a trailer. Uh, these movies are fun enough. I really enjoy even Bad Boys 2, which is far dumber than Bad Boys. I find it to just be a thrill ride and a lot of fun to watch. Blow, just a great cocaine Johnny Depp movie. Good Burger is actually a decent one to watch with the kids. It's based on an old Nickelodeon sketch. Um, it's funny enough. It's not really for little, little kids, but you know, tweens, kids that are seven, eight years old, it's got some good fun, kind of family friendly jokes in it. House of the Witch is a very interesting looking horror film that's only a couple of years old. I knew they were gonna be adding some more horror movies and don't worry, I got plenty of horror recommendations coming up on the channel very soon. Men in Black and Men in Black 2, if you didn't get enough of those back when they came out. The first one is far and away the best, even far better than the new one that just came out. Something completely different is a documentary called Cinna, which is about a Formula One race car driver, and I found this to be a very riveting documentary. It plays out almost like a movie, like it just, it's a very, very compelling story, and it's one of those sports stories. You do not have to be into racing to enjoy it. Sin City was one of my favorite movies for forever. The only reason I'm not interested in rewatching it is because I've got it almost completely committed to memory, so it's just not as fun for me to watch anymore, but I absolutely love the original Sin City, so be sure to check that one out if it's been a while. The Island is another Michael Bay movie uh, that could mean that maybe Michael Bay's working out some sort of deal with Netflix, but it's one of his better ones in my opinion. It's sort of a remake of Logan's Run, and not a bad one either. Uh, as far as Michael Bay movies go, if you find them to be like too lowbrow, I'm not saying the island's highbrow, but it's it's close compared to some of his other work. So definitely check that one out if you're looking for something kind of interesting in the sci-fi realm. Train Spotting, another one that's just one of my favorites. It's a cult classic. I know a lot of you have seen it by now, but if you have not, it's a really amazing movie about heroin addiction. Really incredible performances and all of that, but it's directed so well. The music's great, some of the shots are incredible. It's one of the most creative films I've ever seen. So if you've never seen this one, mark it on your list, watch it early in October, if you have a strong stomach. And then Troy is getting added, but I'll save you the time. Uh, here, here is the best five seconds of Troy. Yep, it doesn't get much better than that, so if you're not really that into that scene, don't bother watching Troy. But let's move on with the rest of October. On October 3rd, Peaky Blinders Season 5 gets added. I just recommended this on the Flicks of the Week earlier this week. All four previous seasons are currently on Netflix. I'm excited for the fifth season. It's a really great show. Tom Hardy has a small role. The rest of the cast is great. Really good throwback gangster stuff in this one and it's just beautifully shot really well acted the soundtrack's great i love everything about this show especially the fact that it's fairly short the seasons are only six episodes long so you can burn through them pretty quickly it's not as much of a chore to get through these british shows as it seems to be with some of the american series big mouth season three gets added uh, i'm not a fan of the show i've seen parts of it i think it's funny but there's just way too much stuff to be watching for me to concern myself with this cartoon however if you like adult animation uh, this one is funny it's a lot of dick and fart jokes so if you value those definitely check the show out if you don't I, there's not a whole lot more in big mouth for you this field doesn't make any sense and then one thing in here that does and 
then In the Tall Grass is a horror film Netflix is adding and they appear to be proud of it. The trailer looks slick. It looks like it's going to be good. I'm hoping it's good. I do not have time to do a full review on it because I've got other plans when this comes out. But if it is good, it will likely be making it into my horror recommendations throughout the month of October. Now, before we get to the other 10 on this list, I got to tell you about CyberGhost VPN. They are a fantastic sponsor for this show because they allow you to watch Netflix in other countries. There are different movies in the UK, in Germany, in France. My US viewers, you can watch those. My international viewers, you can watch all of these movies that I'm talking about that are only available in the US. All you gotta do is you gotta get a CyberGhost VPN account. It's easy to set up and you can sign up for as little as $2.75 a month depending on which plan you pick. And just as an example, Netflix UK has a ton of movies that are not available on Netflix US including A Simple Favor, Fast and Furious 8, Tomb Raider, American Made, Rick and Morty for another really great show, Baby Driver, Blade Runner 2049, The Foreigner with Jackie Chan, Suicide Squad, Mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg, The Equalizer with Denzel Washington, Den of Thieves, which I really like, Sicario 2. Just to name a few, you can watch all of those with a basic CyberGhost VPN account. It's really cool. And they give you a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you sign up for it and just find you're not even taking advantage of it, cancel the thing. They offer 24 seven customer support. I have been using this service for a while now and I've never needed any assistance because it's so intuitive and it always works. But if you need help, they are there to help you. And you can use it simultaneously on up to seven devices. Use it on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Fire Stick, Linux, and more. That's enough for me, but to boot, it's a VPN. It, it keeps your browsing secure. It blocks malicious websites. It's, it's a good thing to have. A lot of people are signing on to them now. And especially like you EU, Viewers, if YouTube content is blocked, this will help you get around that as well. But let's move on with the rest of the list. And then on October 11th, it's the biggest release for Netflix this month, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. This movie, follows the events of Breaking Bad. As soon as the series ends on Breaking Bad, this movie supposedly sort of picks up. Maybe there's a time lapse or something, but Aaron Paul returns as Jesse. Very little is known about this movie. The trailers are very vague, but original writers, everybody's involved with this, so there's a very good chance it is gonna be good, and at the very least, it's gonna do a good job, hopefully, of tying up some loose ends in Breaking Bad. I think it's gonna be a must watch for anybody that enjoyed Breaking Bad. Uh, you can currently watch the entire series on Netflix. Uh, it's getting to be a little too late to binge watch it for the premiere, but I'm very excited to check out this. And this is likely one that I will be watching and reviewing the day it releases. Search the hospital. Nobody needs to get hurt. I mean, he's a head case. Put down all your guns. And then it's kind of strange, they're also releasing another film that day, another thriller called Fractured. I guess they're thinking people are just gonna just binge watch two movies, but this one actually stars Sam Worthington, and it seems kind of like the movie Breakdown with Kurt Russell, which I've talked about on the channel recently. His daughter gets injured, they take her to a hospital, and then she disappears, and he's trying to unravel a mystery. Sounds compelling, yet it doesn't have me nearly as intrigued as El Camino. On October 15th, Dark Crimes, the worst reviewed Jim Carrey movie ever made, gets added. I've been interested to see it. I may give it a chance just out of pure morbid curiosity. This is a crime thriller based on a best-selling novel. I just felt the need to put it on this list because I've been intrigued by it, yet I really have no plans to watch it. Sinister 2 is another horror film getting added. It's a few years old at this point, but from what I've heard, it's pretty good. I remember liking the original Sinister in terms of watching things during the month of October. Um, there's probably not gonna be a whole lot of new things added to Netflix that are gonna be perfect for Halloween, quite like this one. With the exception of Eli, getting added on October 18th, which is actually directed by the same director as Sinister 2, oddly enough. 
Weird coincidence, I know, but this is a Netflix original movie, another horror film, so there you go. You got a good little selection of some new horror movies getting added in October, and Eli has me interested as well. It also looks like one that I may do a review on. So if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button and click that little bell icon so you get notified when videos like that one come out and when new videos recommending other movies on Netflix come out just like this one. First you must ask yourself, are you wealthy? Meryl Streep, of all people, stars in The Laundromat. Now, I could care less about her. I'm much more interested in Gary Oldman and Antonio Banderas playing these two super rich, creepy lawyers. They look like a ton of fun in this movie, and this movie is actually directed by Steven Soderbergh, who's most famous for the Ocean's Eleven movies, most recently for Unsane, and a whole bunch of other really great movies. He's a really accomplished director. He's like a top 10 director, so I'm really excited to see what he does with this. It looks like it's got a fun vibe. Well, it does look like it'll definitely have its own flavor. It does look like it'll appeal to you if you enjoyed The Big Short, because it's about kind of going after corporate greed, stuff like that. So again, looks like a lot of fun, kind of surprising that this one's gonna be a Netflix original, actually. Also on the 18th, Living With Yourself is a new show starring two Paul Rudds. Looks a little odd. It's obviously gonna be a comedy show. It's a limited series. We'll see if it's any good. I'm lukewarm on Paul Rudd. I like him sometimes, other times I could really care less. Uh, this looks like maybe one of the care less times, but we'll see, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Another big release for Netflix this month on October 25th is Dolomite Is My Name. This has got a huge cast, including Eddie Murphy, who hasn't been in anything major in a really long time. It's actually got a limited theater release that coincides with the Netflix release. Another one, I'll be watching it. Oddly enough, there are a couple of Dolomite movies on Amazon Prime and not on Netflix. I'm not sure what that's about, but this does look funny. Mike Epps is in it. I, I like a lot of the actors that are in this one, so hopefully it all works together and it's a fun watch. Also on the 25th, Rattlesnake is a psychological horror about a woman who gets bit by a rattlesnake and then is healed, but then owes a debt to the medicine woman that healed her. I'm gonna reserve any anticipation for this one, but I'll definitely be checking it out when it comes out. And then in preparation for The Irishman, which comes out at the end of November, they're adding more Martin Scorsese with one of his best, one of, Raging Bull. If you've never seen this movie, it is a movie lover's must watch. I know some of you are gonna tell me in the comments that it's a boring movie. I know a lot of you probably already love this movie, and I hope that a few of you that have not yet watched Raging Bull watch it and, and really kind of see, see the movie and enjoy it and get something out of it. I kind of had a really good relationship with this film and some other Scorsese movies in college. They really sort of frame the way I look at movies, and this is certainly one of them. It really is a masterpiece. Um, and, and if you, you find yourself to be not just someone that likes watching movies, but someone that's really developing a good uh, palette for filmmaking, this is a must watch. And then here's everything leaving in October. You may want to pause the screen, see if there's anything you've been wanting to watch, anything that's maybe been on your watch list, mark down the date. Make sure you watch it before the date listed. It's leaving on the date listed, which means you're not going to be able to watch it on that date. I'd like to thank all of the Patreon supporters. These are the people donating $5 or more per month. So thank them in the comments below. If you wanna become a Patreon supporter, or at least to see what it's all about, there's a link to that in the description. But I will keep making videos like this as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking this one out, and you will see me on the next one.